Hey, hey, welcome back everybody. Joey here with a story that's not so bright and cheery, but we should talk about it and it's relevant to us because we've no doubt heard the phrase, if you are planning to move to the Philippines or if you are already in the Philippines, the phrase of don't become more valuable dead than you are alive. And that is what this story is all about today. Unfortunately, there's some tragic components to it. On June 21st, a beauty queen from Santo Tomas Pampanga, Geneva Lopez, she um, went missing with her boyfriend from Israel, and his name is his last name is Cohen. And their SUV was discovered burned out at a later time. This is the SUV, typically burnt, trying to destroy evidence, and um, I'm sure that's why this was burnt this time. So what happened? How did it happen? Why did it happen? The motive is what's so scary. When you see a beautiful woman like this, this is Miss Lopez, the first thought is that she garnered the attention of a ne'er-do-well, somebody that would intend harm to her, and then her boyfriend was collateral damage. Now, in this case, her boyfriend was collateral damage, but it was not for the reason that most of us would suspect. There are lots of cases like that. If you look, there's a doctor on the east coast of uh, the United States. Uh, his family was targeted just because his wife and daughters went to the grocery store. The wrong person saw them. They followed him home. They ended up, uh, they didn't lock the door to the house at night, but the bad guys just walked in, beat the husband unconscious with a baseball bat on the sofa, tied him up in the basement, and then and then terrorized. You can, from that description, you can find it, but I will tell you this, nobody came to the rescue. When the police finally were notified and the police came, they set a perimeter up, and instead of going to the house to rescue him, they set a perimeter. You could hear the screaming from the house at the perimeter. And uh, unfortunately, everybody but the husband perished. So Google those facts and you'll find out what I'm talking about. So on to the Philippines case. Miss Lopez and Mr. Cohen. Well, it turns out that Miss uh, Lopez had had been mortgaged some property, and and they use the word pawned and mortgaged, and so I'll make sure that we understand this. But a former police officer was in possession of a large quantity of land uh, near uh, near Clark. Right? It's in Tarlac. So here's a map: Tarlac City, Angeles City. You can kind of see where they're at related to each other in central uh, Luzon. Not far from Clark is Santo Tomas, uh, uh, Lubao, well, Santo Tomas and Pampanga, and you can see the area there. So actually I was at, uh, at a festival there last May uh, at a friend's home, Santo Tomas, uh, Lubao, Pampanga. So it's a beautiful place, beautiful people, and this is such a tragedy. So what happened? Well, one of the people involved in this plan had, um, had his conscience bothering him, and he went and turned himself in and then exposed two former police officers. And I want to emphasize former police officers because they were fired back in 2019 and 2020 for being absent without leave or AWOL, as the people in the military know it. So they were AWOL during the pandemic. They Both of these police officers were assigned to Angeles City. So one of the police officers has this large parcel of land. It's pawned to uh, Miss Lopez, and he wants it back. Well, Miss Lopez decides she's keeping it, so apparently he hadn't paid. I don't know all of the details, but Miss Lopez is not given the property back, and this guy's trying to figure out a way, how do I get this property? So he comes up with this scheme, and he recruits the other police officer to pose as a buyer, and so they meet with... These, these two police officers meet with Miss, uh, uh, Miss Lopez and Mr. Cohen, and they, they meet, they discuss all this, and this one police officer, he feigns to be an investor that wants to buy the property. So now Miss Lopez is thinking, well, I can, guess I can get my money back now because they're going to sell the property, and then so this will put an end to all of this. And so they rode out to look at the property, at which point the two police officers shot and killed Ms. Lopez and Mr. Cohen. Now, the driver of the SUV, he is the one that had the guilty conscience, and he's the one that went to the police, and he's the one that fingered the two former police officers. So we've got three people, two former police officers, and we've got the driver that went and surrendered himself. That is the reason that there was a break in the case, because up until this point, 
They had no information as to what had happened and, uh, and where they, they were located, you know, were they dead, were they alive, whatever. They had no information other than they had found the burnt SUV. Now, there are two other people involved. I'm not sure exactly how they are involved. They have not released the names. And they say that once they have collected the evidence so that they can actually formally charge them, then they will release the names and those, those names will become public. So right now we've got three in custody and we've got a total of five. I saw another place there was a total of seven. But for the most part, this is how the story unfolded. And again, why is it relevant to us? It's because this was not a violent sexual crime. This was not a, a crime predicated on uh, Miss, uh, uh, Miss Lopez being a beauty queen. This was simply a financial issue. Somebody decided that the only way to get this property back into his name because he couldn't pay her back was to kill her. And that's what he did. So he recruited some people. They formulated a plan, premeditated action. And now we've got so many families devastated. We've got uh, Mr. Cohen, whose brother was here, I saw on TV last week. Uh, very gracious fellow. All he wanted was his brother back to find his brother. And he has no ill will towards the country of the Philippines or the people here. Uh, just a, you know, a, a tragic story for all the families involved, even the perpetrators. Their families now will suffer because they have a family member who committed such atrocious crimes. So we have so many families, again, destroyed the second, third order effects of violent crime. Um, you know, they're often not thought of, but there we have it. So, so Miss Lopez has been found and uh, her boyfriend they have been found. Here's a photo from... Uh, the, the scene when they were doing the body recovery. Their car was uh, obviously torched. Another picture of the SUV. Ms. Lopez and Mr. Cohen were identified by personal effects and then the, um, the medical examination um, revealed that both had been shot twice. Um, Mr. Cohen had been shot twice in the front and, um, and Ms. Uh, Lopez, I believe, was shot in the back and shot in the leg. So uh, she was shot twice and uh, and so was her boyfriend. Tragic story for all. Again, it's a lesson to us. If you are married and you've got a happy, trusting uh, relationship with your wife and you build a house on a property, you're probably okay. But th here's the thing. We don't know about their extended family, their cousins, the, you know, what other people are thinking. If we knock off old Joe here, maybe uh, we can get in, move into the house and live a better life. So make sure whatever you do, um, think about it. Uh, my recommendation is to always structure everything so that you are not more valuable dead than you are alive. In fact, structure it so that you're more valuable alive than dead. And I'm not saying don't leave anything to your spouse or to your partner. I'm saying, you know, get some counsel, be wise about it, and let's not have something like this happen to any of us. Again, we can learn by these types of things. All right. If you enjoy this content, please like, subscribe, share, heck, even join and contribute to my delinquency. It's greatly appreciated. Until next time, remember, better thinking does equal a better life. Joey out.